Evening everyone, match day three in the UEFA Women's Champions League as Servette host Chelsea in Geneva. A visit from last season's beaten finalists and how it's brought out the local public. Chelsea's star-studded squad, a big attraction. A crowd of over 10,000 expected here tonight. The WSL champions so near yet so far in last season's competition. They were magnificent in their run to the final. But there was to be no Gothenburg glory. This season offers an immediate opportunity to go on better. Servette without such lofty ambitions. This only their second season of Champions League football. No side in this competitive group has maximum points after two games. Last season's runners-up in Germany, Wolfsburg, lead the way. Although they, of course, level on points with Chelsea. It's one win and one defeat so far for Joe Montemuro's Juventus. So that bottom of the section yet to score a group stage goal. So over 10,000 tickets sold tonight. 5,000 of them, I'm told, will be school children. What a fantastic idea that is as well, as they look to inspire the next generation in Geneva. Entranced in thralls by the prospect of European footballing royalty, really, in their city this evening. Fantastic crowd, making plenty of noise. This was one of the venues used during UEFA Euro 2008. The Swiss men's side played a World Cup qualifier here against Northern Ireland last month. As I mentioned, under-12s being allowed in free to Servette's UEFA Women's Champions League games this season. There were just under 6,000 here for the 3-0 loss to Juventus on match day one. Interest has, as you can tell, swelled since. Servette's came through three qualifying rounds to reach this season's group stage. A fantastic achievement, really, in itself, I think you'd have to say. Chelsea qualified automatically as the WSL champions beat Manchester City to the English League title last season in what was a close run race that Chelsea just about came out on top in, but narrowly missed out in terms of this competition, beaten 4-0 by Barcelona in Gothenburg in the previous campaign's final. So many memories for Chelsea from that run to Gothenburg, though. They will want to make sure that they put on a good performance tonight, the Servette players with so many youngsters in the crowd. It's something several of their players have been saying that they want to make sure that they do the occasion justice, that they do inspire with a good performance the next generation of Servette supporters and, of course, potentially as well, young Swiss players finding their way in this competition. Of course, Chelsea, the much more experienced club with much more experienced players in terms of this elite level of women's competition. They are very much learning on the job. Something that Emma Hayes, the Chelsea head coach, had said actually that she felt as though Servette would have learnt plenty from their first two games, that 3-0 loss here against Juventus on match day one in a 5-0 defeat to Wolfsburg in Germany on match day two. Chelsea were held to a 3 all draw by the German side in England on match day one. And then there was that narrow victory for Chelsea away at Juventus on match day two. Well, these are the Knights and the standard of opposition Servette have hoped for and strived for. Swiss champions for the first time last season. They're now dining at the very top table, rubbing shoulders with some of Europe's best. Chelsea firmly in that bracket. Last season's beaten finalists, twice beaten semi-finalists. This time, they want to go all the way to achieve, to finally achieve their holy grail, to win this competition. Almost an obsession for them, an ambition that burns bright in West London. England's best back-to-back -back WSL champions.
but it's continental kudos they now crave the most. What a wonderful sense of occasion there is here in Geneva this evening. A crowd of over 10,000 inside the stadium. The Servette side contains two changes from their match day two defeat against Wolfsburg in Germany. The captain, Elisa Lagonia, was only deemed fit enough for the bench that night, but she's in from the start here. Laura Tufo, who's been capped by Switzerland at youth level, also comes into the side. Out go Monica Mendes and Dinah Bormer. The experience of 35-year-old forward Hade will be important. She scored three goals in six Champions League appearances this season. Referee is from Romania, Juliana Dimitrescu. There are the two captains. Magonia wearing the armbands for Servette, and of course it's the Swedish international Magdalena Eriksson who captains Chelsea. Well, the Chelsea coach Emma Hayes has made seven changes to the 11 that began their 1 0 winner Aston Villa in the WSL. Bright Cuthbert Fleming and the captain Ericsson are the four who remain. Penilla Harder and Anik Nowen both miss out through injury. Hoping to make their first appearances of the season are summer signing Lauren James and Maren Mielda, who's been out since March with a knee injury. They're both on the bench. Chelsea played in the 20th UEFA Women's Club final last season. It was Barcelona, though, who became the eighth different winner. The Blues eager for a shot at redemption, a chance to put that right. So they're hoping for their first points of the UEFA Women's Champions League group stage. A change of goalkeeper tonight as well for Chelsea. Mushevich gets a chance to impress between the sticks with Anne Katrin Berger rested to the bench. And we are all set to go in Geneva. Chelsea in their change strip. It's Chelsea's first trip to Switzerland. In fact, neither of these clubs has ever met another from their respective countries. Our visit from the WSL champions, last season's beaten finalists has sparked the imagination in Geneva. A really good crowd in attendance. And it's Millie Bright on the ball for Chelsea. See, it's uh, three at the back for Servet. The early clearance from Pereira. He's the Swiss and English champions. So that's against Chelsea on match day three in the UEFA Women's Champions League as Cuthbert looked for the run there. Moved forwards by Fleming. who got the winner against Aston Villa in the WSL at the weekend. For their part, Servet reached the Swiss Cup quarter-finals, beating Luzern by four goals to one at the weekend. They had four different scorers, too. Did note that uh, Emma Hayes, the Chelsea head coach, was asked what she'd give her side out of ten for their performance at Aston Villa, and she said six. I'm sure she'll be hoping for better tonight, Emma Hayes. Played forward by Millie Bright. Touch there by Fleming to Cuthbert. <laughs> J 
Just seemed to be a, a stray arm there, didn't that? She'll be important, though. Elodie Nakash in the midfield tonight for Servette, a Moroccan international sign from Dijon over the summer. That's a good ball to pick out Cuthbert. And Chelsea have plenty of players arriving on the edge of the box here. It's Millie Bright with the ball in. And they're queuing up in the box here. And Frank Kirby, and again, so close twice. And then Drew Spence had a go. That's a big let off for Servette. And it comes inside three minutes in Geneva. Ericsson with the pass. What a start that would have been for Chelsea. Jess Carter. Again, they look to that right hand side, Chelsea. Brought inside by Cuthbert, fantastic movement by Frank Kirby, Wrighton's in there, and so was Sam Kerr, but for once Kirby couldn't pick the pass. Alex Severak, the man in charge of Servette, appointed in July of 2017, he guided the club to their first top flight promotion and their first Swiss title last season. Also works as a financial director at the Gradu Graduate Institute Geneva, a role he's been in for almost 19 years. Fleming. Kerr central, Kirby arriving on the edge of the box as is Wrighton. Certainly Chelsea dominating the possession in the early stages. Cuthbert looks for Kirby and Wrighton's there and Kirby's there. Oh, it's a lovely touch, and Frank Kirby. They just about worked their way out through Lagonia. Just relieves the pressure here for a moment for the Swiss champions who've really been under the cosh in the early stages. Good initial save to deny Kirby, who then sure saw the shot come back off the crossbar. She said that she wants to see her side be relentless and ruthless tonight, Emma Hayes. Just a feeling from the Chelsea head coach that perhaps when they've got in front in games this season, that maybe they haven't pressed home that advantage as much as she would like, Emma Hayes. And that was maybe the case against Aston Villa at the weekend. Hade. Can Chelsea win it back quickly? Millie Bright, who's the only player to start all of Chelsea's Champions League games last season. Sula to take the throw in for Servette. Carter. Bright. Brought down here by Wrighton, who immediately looked for Frank Kirby. The flag was up. He's the joint top scorer. In the Champions League last season, Frank Kirby, along with Emoso of the holders, Barcelona, got six each. Got a 50th England cap last month, Frank Kirby, and has a good record in this competition. 17 goals in 31 appearances. And it's Tessa Tamplin. On the right-hand side of this Servette side, something that Emma Hayes really did pick out as a potential threat for Chelsea tonight with that combination of Sula and Tamplin down the right-hand side. Tamplin, an Australian under-20 international, has dual Aussie and Dutch citizenship. 
A big move for her to Switzerland over the summer, left her hometown club in New South Wales as Frank Kirby latches onto this. And Kerr couldn't quite bring it under her spell. Moy Pulse. Bright. Good movement here by Lloyd Pauls. And made the room for the shots. And that's a brilliant finish. She has hammered that home. What a wonderful strike by the German international. Who got a rest for the game against Aston Villa at the weekend. Only came on in the latter stages of the game. Looks fresh tonight and has put Chelsea in front inside eight minutes. Movement was brilliant, wasn't it? The pass to pick her out good as well from Brighton. There was that touch inside, but still so much to do. The touch on the right foot, the shot with the left. And it is the type of finish you'd expect of an accomplished centre forward. What a strike that was by Melanie Neupoltz. And Chelsea's early intent there, early pressure, you'd have to say, has been rewarded. Kirby wins it back quickly. Really has been getting across that message to her players in the lead up to this game after the weekend, Emma Hayes, that there has to be an urgency about them, a ruthlessness about them. And they really have looked at it from the very first whistle here. Bright. They were so good, so consistent. So good to watch as well, Chelsea, both domestically and in their run to last season's Champions League final. They were perhaps shown a whole different level, though, by Barcelona in the first half in Gothenburg. And that may well act as inspiration for them this season. Cuthbert. Melly Bright is a long way forward. Bright. Rare chance for Servet to get forward with Templet. They haven't really got Hade involved just yet. The number seven, he could well be important now. Was there a push there? There was. A foul by Padilla. They're in Cuthbert, the player brought down. She can be a dangerous player. The Polish international Natalia Padilla signed a new deal with Servette until 2023 last Friday. Says how much she loves the city, loves the club. Bright. Carter. Ericsson. by Carter, Kirby couldn't quite get to it, and then the touch by Lagonia. Hade. It's Tamplin who went from right to centre there, but not picked out. Nakash goes down. Certainly showing more ambition here, Servet, since going a goal down, but yet to trouble. Zachira Mushovic. Brighton, the player with the problem here. Certainly this switch that we've seen or tended to see in formation this season from uh, Emma Hayes to a 3-4-3. We'll ask more of Guro Wright and defensively equally Aaron Cuthbert on the other side of the pitch. Eriksson. Brighton.
Saturday's 1-0 win over Aston Villa was actually the first time this season that Chelsea hadn't scored more than once in a game. It did stretch their unbeaten run to nine matches, though eight of them wins. They've started the season very well since that opening weekend defeat to Arsenal in the WSL. Bright. Fleming unable to control that. Lloyd Pauls with the header forward. Cuthbert wins it again for Chelsea, but the cash it was who came away with it. Chelsea appealing for offside. And the flag does indeed go up against Hade. Tamplin. Better this from Servet. Sula in a race to try and keep that in. Does love to get forward. Amandine Sula, really experienced player, 34 years young. Normally of Marseille. I recall she spent many years at Saint Etienne as well, where she won the French Cup. But this is the goal that is the difference. Good vision from Millie Bright, lovely first touch to bring it inside for Lloyd Pols and then a quite devastating finish from the German international. Eriksson. Cuthbert has Fleming in support, and Kerr will look to win the header, but it's a good take that. Oh, the goalkeeper, Pereira. Eight goals conceded by Pereira in Servette's first two Champions League group stage games. Another one conceded tonight, but you'd have to say that they have reacted pretty well to that early goal for Chelsea. Kirby, Spence, Carter to Bright, Spence, a lovely touch here, finds Frank Kirby to make it too. As she does, ruthlessly. It's what we've come to expect from Fran Kirby. Ice in the veins when she gets in front of goal. And we're just over a quarter of an hour gone. It's 2-0 Chelsea, lovely flip that, wasn't it? The combination that we saw so often last season. Kerr to Kirby, 2-0. Their first goal in the Champions League this season. The player who is the joint top scorer along with Jenny Emoso in last season's competition. Emma Hayes had said she wanted Chelsea to be relentless and ruthless tonight. I think we're seeing that, aren't we? Really got the feeling listening to Emma Hayes ahead of this game that it was a, a no-mercy approach, really. That they would seek to score as many as possible against the Swiss champions. who we were beaten 5-0 by Wolfsburg on match day two. But they have a chance to get one back here.
The upswing delivery that is cleared by Frank Kirby. Wrighton, yellow shirt surging forward again here. Chelsea hungry for more goals, Wrighton with the cross. And how easy was that? Tucked home by Sam Kerr. Two goals in as many minutes for Chelsea. Who are proving to be just far too good here for the Swiss champions. Wrighton with the cross. Knocked down by Leupolz to Sam Kerr, who did the rest. Worked so well. But big question marks over the defending. You could see what the goalkeeper, Pereira, thought of that in front of her. And it's yet another game, another night, where both Kerr and Kirby are on the score sheet. So key, their combination, their understanding, their goals to Chelsea's run to last season's final. Kirby again to Kerr. It's those two combining again. And Chelsea here are running riot. It's a quite sensational display here of attacking prowess. You just can't give them this amount of time and space. And Kirby always knows where Kerr is and vice versa. They really have got to reorganize here. They've got to get some shape. They've got to get their heads. The Servette players. Because they are being run ragged here by Chelsea. Four goals inside 20 minutes from Emma Hayes' team. Good movement again here from Kerr, who's got herself in behind once more. This time, couldn't hit the target. But the smile on the face says it all, how they're enjoying themselves out there right now, the English champions. Three forward here for Servette, the header the finds touch by Carter. He's already made as many league starts this season as she do, did in the last two seasons combined, Jess Carter. Ade unable to keep that in. Not really had the opportunity, Servette, to get Tessa Tamplin involved down this right-hand side, an area singled out by Emma Hayes as a part of the Servette team. With the fullback as well, Sula, who looks to get forward as being a problem for Chelsea, but they've not really laid a glove on the WSL champions yet, Servette. Miscontrolled by Wright. It's not Servette's first season in the UEFA Women's Champions League. They fell at the first hurdle in last season's competition, beaten 9-2 on aggregate by Atletico. Alex Severac's team. Kirby 
Walker. Wrighton makes the run down the left. Here's the Canadian international Fleming to Ericsson. Carter. Ericsson. Millie Bright. Ericsson has talked about Chelsea conceding too many, as she put it, cheap goals this season. Kerr will keep it in. Fleming. Ericsson. Bright. Lovely run inside here by Cuthbert. This time it doesn't quite click for Chelsea. Well, they got past Benfica, Atletico, Wolfsburg and Bayern to reach the final last season. Chelsea find themselves in a competitive group with Wolfsburg, who, of course, they've had several battles with in this competition over the years. And uh, as Emma Hayes has said herself, uh, Ever improving Juventus now coached by former Arsenal coach Joe Montemura. Right. Moy Pulse. Hade. Fleming. Ericsson. Chelsea aside with, as we've already seen, so many attacking threats. They scored 69 goals in 22 league games last season. I have to say, though, Sabet, domestically at least, do have a reputation for solid defending. Had by far the best defensive record in the Swiss top flight last season. 17 goals conceded in 28 games. Zurich had the next best record and they conceded more than twice as many, but Chelsea on four occasions have really opened them up here. Sula. Carter read what was coming. Ericsson. Spence, Ericsson. Fleming looked into getting behind and Kirby to her right. She's picked her out. And it was never really in any doubt, was it? A fifth for Chelsea. And we've only played 25 minutes in Geneva. It's so good. It's scintillating. It's almost staggering, really, that Chelsea have taken apart Servette with such regularity. Kirby has a second, and Chelsea have five. Is this a repeat of the scoreline that Servette lost by in Germany against Wolfsburg on match day two? Well, you feel it could get a whole lot worse for them here tonight. The mood that Chelsea are in. Wrighton's cross. Spence. Oh, great movement again by Wrighton. The pass not quite right to pick her out. That was a firm challenge from... Amandine Sula.
Ericsson up from the back. Fleming towards the edge of the area. And towards that near post it went. Ericsson with plenty of distance on there. Cleared by Lagonia. Spence. Bright. Scored in England's 10-0 win over Latvia at the end of last month. Millie Bright, named in the FIFA Best 11 of last season. I remember us saying last season how the new arrivals that they'd made ahead of the start of the previous campaign, Chelsea players with lots of Champions League experience had made a big difference as Fleming looks to get in here. Kirby waits in the box on a hat-trick. Kerr to right and... Ericsson. Now by Spence. Tamplin, the player brought down by Drew Spence. Well, she couldn't have wished or hoped for much better, could she, so far tonight, Emma Hayes. Had said that she felt that her squad was in a good place, as she put it ahead of this, said that there was a, a good energy across the team. And he must wonder what's hit him. Five Chelsea goals inside the first 26 minutes. Loy Pulse, two for Kirby and two for Kerr. So in their final round of Champions League qualifying, Servette beat the Scottish champions Glasgow City. Fine achievement for them to make it through qualification. That shouldn't be underestimated or underplayed. Glasgow City, a club with plenty of Champions League experience in recent years. Sandy Mendley, who got the winner that sent Servette through to the group stage. Well, they've just had no answers, no response here to what has been an energetic, effervescent, ruthless Chelsea. Bright. Ericsson. Struggling here tonight, but you'd have to say what a rise to prominence it's been for Servette in recent years. They were only promoted to the top flight of Swiss women's football in 2018. They finished fourth in their first season. They were top when the following season was abandoned due to COVID. And then won the title in their third top flight season. Lovely ball by Cuthbert. Guru right and wants to get in on the act and wasn't far away there. Just wouldn't bend enough for the Norwegian international. Really is a fantastic player, Goro Wright. Maybe didn't see quite as much of a last season as many expected. Comes from the same town in Norway as the Leon player, Ada Hegerberg. For a town that is only populated by 5,000 people to produce two footballers as good as them is quite something, isn't it? Wrighton again. 
And Kerr and Kirby on hat tricks and loopholes. Oh, they hit that into the ground. Currently holds three of the major domestic trophies in England, Chelsea, and they could make it a clean sweep of last season's honours as they'll meet Arsenal at Wembley in the delayed 2021 FA Cup final. That is scheduled to be on the 5th of December. Chelsea beat an injury-affected Manchester City 3-0 in the semi-finals at the end of last month. Tamplin. Fleming on her way. Kerr waits in the middle. Kirby's there too, and it was Spence who got the shot in. Being kept busy. Pereira. Understand the decision from Spence to hit that first time. Somebody who's played in all six of Chelsea's Champions League campaigns, Drew Spence, there right from the start, has seen how this club has grown and developed so much under the management of Emma Hayes. 13 years she's been with Chelsea, Drew Spence, before even Emma Hayes was there. Hade is the player down here, somebody who has had experience of English football two years in the WSL, firstly with Bristol and then with Reading. If they were to take something out of this game tonight, Hade was always going to be really important to them, but they've just not been able to get her into the game at all. Here's how she's been hurt. Just caught by Lloyd Pulse. First season in a decade that she's played in the Champions League. Hade was last was with Rio Vallecano, Spanish side, in the 2011-12 season. Ten minutes of the first half remaining. And I wonder whether Emma Hayes will already have one eye on Chelsea's next game, which is against Manchester City on the 14th of November. Changes perhaps a foot from the Chelsea head coach. Yeah. Yeah. Sevra, the Servette head coach, somebody really well respected in women's football. Somebody who studied at the famous Claire Fontaine Academy in France back in 2009. He's had his UEFA A license since 2003, but compare squad to squad personnel to personnel, and it's a really tough task from a coaching perspective for Servet. Even they had a kickoff to take something from this game. Now find themselves five down, and it could get worse here. Quite run for Guru Wright, and Spence looks to win it back for the WSL champions. Carter. Oh. They've come up short in the final last season against Barcelona, Chelsea, but when you look at, as a club, very much the women's team to Chelsea's progress as a club. The development over recent years has been something else. The first club to have both the men's and the women's teams reach the Champions League final 
in the same season. Remarkable achievement. And then beat Manchester City. With Kai Havertz getting the only goal of that game. What they give Chelsea's women's side for another shot at a final. Looking for a sixth on the night here. And they've got it. It's Fleming this time. Having got the winner against Aston Villa in the WSL at the weekend. She scored from such an acute angle there. Piles on the misery for Sir Bat. I thought she might pull it back for Kerr. And it shows the confidence she's got right now, the Canadian international, that she took that on from that angle. It had to be perfect, didn't it? And it was with the outside of the boot. I'll tell you what, you know, that's a cracking finish. And it's a sensational six here from Chelsea. And no wonder we're seeing Maren Mielda and Lauren James warming up, both hoping, having recovered from injuries, to make their first appearances of the season. I would imagine that is very likely come the second half now. That look, that expression says it all, doesn't it, from Eric Sevrak. So that taken apart here by the English champions. Fleming again. Tenacity of Chelsea when you consider how comfortable they are here really is something exactly what Emma Hayes had asked for. Kirby can quite slip it through for Lloyd Pulse. Bright. Spence. Fleming, the take by Pereira. It's worth repeating when you see how good Chelsea have been in this first half, in that final third. How well they've taken their chances, how well they've made their openings. Servet did have, by some distance, the best defensive record in the Swiss top flight last season. Bright. Ericsson. Knocked down by Kerr. Kirby. Cuthbert. In towards Kerr again. And Spelti. The centre half who did just enough there to put off Sam Kerr. Kept in by Guru Wrighton. 
Cross aimed at Frank Kirby. And a good take by Pereira, who to say she's conceded six goals so far in this first half. Hasn't played badly at all. Player who won two Portuguese titles during five years with Sporting. Club she left to join Servette this summer. Sula. Erin Cuthbert. And both Kerr and Kirby will both be desperate to get the hat trick first, won't they? Presuming one of them does. 52 goals between them last season. Staggering numbers they set. A relationship almost telepathic at times. Running with the foul. Bright it is who finds touch. Professionalism we're seeing here from Chelsea is something that will maybe please Emma Hayes even more than the scoreline. Just never satisfied, never content. It's what she wants to see from them, not just tonight, but in the season as a whole. Would have been hard, I would imagine over the summer to rouse themselves after that such disappointing defeat in the Champions League final. It was always going to be about how they reacted, whether they could use the manner of that defeat as fuel, really, for this coming season to go again. The try and hit, though, at that sort of new level that perhaps Barcelona showed them in the first half of the final in Gothenburg. And this is a statement performance we're seeing from them tonight. After two pretty close games on match days one and two, we should remember for Chelsea. And a three-all draw with Wolfsburg on match day one, a 2-1 win in Turin against Juventus on match day two. Certainly not close tonight. The Nakash and Magdalena Eriksson, the players, the referee, Juliana Dimitrescu, wanted to speak to that. Well, Chelsea have been sparkling, they have been scintillating. A six-goal first-half performance from the English champions. So that really have had no answers to what has been a ruthless, effervescent, energetic display from Chelsea. Frank Kirby with two of the goals, Sam Kerr with two as well. We also saw Louis Pauls and the Canadian international Fleming getting on the score sheet in that first half in Geneva. That man... Well, he said before the game that they had a mountain to climb tonight. It's an impossible task now for Servet. It's all about playing for pride in the second half. Chelsea just bristling, absolutely brilliant. Emma Hayes' side. Wonderful attacking display of football. You'd have to say that Inez Pereira, the Portuguese goalkeeper, didn't play badly at all in that first half, but still conceded six goals. You wonder what further damage Chelsea can do in the second 45. A crowd of more than 10,000 inside the stadium tonight. In terms of the 
home side's performance. They haven't had a great deal to cheer about, have they? And plenty in here have come to see this Chelsea side, to see the star names and how they've delivered, really, in that first half. I think we always expected that Chelsea would dominate the possession. That's certainly been the case, 68% as opposed to 32 for Savet. Savet yet to register an attempt on target. Ten from Chelsea, six of them have resulted in goals. It could have been many more, 15 total attempts. The thing that will worry Eric Sevrak at half-time is that we know that Emma Hayes has told her players to show no mercy tonight. We'll want to see them score more goals. I would imagine there will be changes as well from Chelsea as they look ahead to the meeting with Manchester City in the WSL on the 14th of November. But they really did start on the front foot, meant business from the word go, really, the WSL champions. Grand, I jump, slip, and then I land you with I'm extra feeling when I enter this. I meant to go out and get the first, the last. I wait the flag, I got extra, extra, extra bad. The first, the last. I wait the flag, I'm extra, extra, extra glad. Extra moves, I'm extra lit, extra fit. Il calcio femminile per me è passione. Il mio sogno è giocare nello stadio della Juventus. La mentalità italiana è cambiata riguardo il calcio femminile. Ti fa ben sperare e ti fa dire non ho fatto tutti questi sacrifici per niente. Io mi chiamo Nicole Guarandi, abito a Torino e la mia squadra preferita è la Juventus. Io ho incominciato a giocare a calcio a 9 anni e tutti mi dicevano va a giocare in una squadra che sei brava. 
il mio sogno è andare a giocare alla Juve. Da piccola c'era sempre il mio papà che guardava le partite, ogni volta diceva io tifo la Juventus, poi quando segnavo urlava così e quindi mi ha messo anche a me la passione. Storia di un grande amore. Ho cominciato a tifare Juventus fin da, da bambino, con le guerre in casa tra mio papà e, e me, perché mio papà è del toro. In Italia è sempre stato visto come uno sport maschile. Da sportivo dico che è uno sport, quindi maschio o femmina che sia è indifferente. Questa sera andiamo a vedere la partita Juventus contro Chelsea. Sarà un momento molto speciale e spero che possa realmente accendere la passione reale del calcio femminile, non solamente in Nicole ma in tutte le, le bambine d'Italia. Non ho mai visto una Juventus allo stadio. Una serata storica, soprattutto per la Juventus femminile, per la prima volta tra le migliori 16 d'Europa. La partita di stasera sarà significativa per me, perché ovviamente guarderò come giocano i ruoli e vedrò i miei miti. My name is Sophie Young in Peterson. I have played in Juventus for two and a half years. It's hard sometimes to be a professional football player, but at an evening like yesterday, the first Champions League game at Allianz, I feel this is why I do it. Walking into that game really gave me goosebumps. It was an amazing experience. to play for so many people. I think for us, the team, it gives us a, a boost uh, on the pitch. And from the day one here, I felt the, the passion from the people of Italy. I think it's important to have more eyes on women's uh, football because it's important for uh, girls to see that they are also able to become professional soccer players. Mi chiamo Nicole, ho 10 anni, gioco per la Juventus femminile Under 11. Quando ero piccola sono cresciuta in un campo da calcio praticamente e guardando le partite, gli allenamenti mi ha appassionato molto e da lì ho iniziato a giocare. È stupendo giocare con le mie compagne anche perché scherziamo mentre giochiamo. Mi piacerebbe tanto continuare a giocare nella Juve e andare in prima squadra e magari diventare come le mie calciatrici preferite. Io sono Stefano Braghin, Head of Juventus Women. La Juventus Femminile nasce nel 2017 eh, quando il club decide di avere una prima squadra. Noi da due stagioni avevamo un settore giovanile, di... però poi queste ragazze non avevano la possibilità di giocare in una prima squadra. E siamo partiti da niente, non avevamo i campi, non avevamo le giocatrici, non avevamo allenatori. Nel marzo del 2019 abbiamo deciso di giocare la prima partita all'Allianz Stadium. Gioca qui, in questo teatro fantastico, l'Allianz Stadium è tutto esaurito. C'era grande attesa perché una partita di calcio femminile in Italia non si era mai giocata in uno stadio. In primi tempi pensavamo di aprire soltanto alcuni, alcune tribune perché ci aspettavamo 5-6 mila persone e poi siamo arrivati a riempire lo stadio a 40 mila. Ed è stato un bellissimo momento, e credo un punto di non ritorno. Mi chiamo Simona Sodini, vivo a Torino da, da 15 anni. Sono venuta qui eh, a giocare per il Torino e poi ancora altre squadre come la Juventus, Milan, Inter. Io ho iniziato a giocare che avevo 3-4 anni. Mia mamma avrebbe voluto che giocassi con le bambole, ma io semplicemente staccavo la testa e giocavo con la testa delle bambole. 
e ancora non c'erano squadre femminili, quindi ero obbligata a giocare nei piccoli quartieri di casa oppure all'oratorio. Ero l'unica bambina, un po' venivo vista un po' così, di solito usavano la parola maschiaccio, però era tanta la mia passione che non ho mai ascoltato quello che si diceva. Oggi è tutto cambiato, oggi il calcio femminile ha grande visibilità e finalmente la donna viene vista anche come calciatrice. Io ho due bambini maschi, il più grande gioca a calcio e con lui vede delle bambine che giocano a calcio, quindi è tutto normale. Non ho mai sentito da lui, mamma che strano, c'è una bimba che gioca con noi. Ti fa ben sperare e ti fa ti fa dire eh, non ho fatto tutti questi sacrifici per niente. Per il calcio femminile io spero che le bambine di oggi possano veramente eh, fare questo sport in piena libertà. Are you watching? I am powerful. I am strong. I am able to be exactly who I am on any given day. And I'm able to stand in my truth no matter what. Now watch us move. Welcome back, everybody. Adam Summerton, your commentator in this group stage game between Servet and Chelsea. And it's the English champions. They put on quite a devastating attacking display in that first half, lead by six goals to nil at half time. Kerr and Kirby with two each. Louis Pols and Fleming also on the score sheet for last season's beaten finalists. And it's Servet who were just fractionally out the first. All the second half. The supporters will hope regenerated, refreshed. And certainly their supporters are sticking with them. We see a change made here at half time as well. Mendley, the player who comes on, the player who scored the goal that sent Servet to the group stage when they beat Glasgow City in the final round of. Qualifying. Won her third Swiss title last season. Has replaced Flirty, who didn't get involved in the game too much in that first half. Both the sides league title winners last season. Chelsea finished two points clear of. Manchester City, Servet, five points clear of Zurich in Switzerland, but there has been a quite evident, clear and obvious sculfing class that we've seen tonight. But this is, we should remember, only Servet's second season of Champions League football. They went out at the first hurdle against Atletico last season as well. That has to be taken into consideration. It is a side, a club at the start of a journey in terms of European football. Chelsea are much further along the road in that respect, something that Emma Hayes acknowledged even before this game. And they certainly deserve still a lot of respect for the progress they've made in recent years, Servet, although they are having 
You don't need me to tell you a very difficult night tonight. Bright. Right in with a touch to Kirby. Touch behind by Spelti. Guru right and he comes across to take this. Really bright being watched very closely there. Uh, Loipol's left it. Kirby. Carter. She did very well, Jess Carter, in against Lauren Hemp in the recent FA Cup semi-final. It was a good test for her that. Lauren Hemp, one of England's finest young players. Look at the determination there from Cuthbert to win it back and slips in Kerr. I think she's caught the goalkeeper there inadvertently. And the chance of the hat-trick there for Sam Kerr. And she wasn't able to take it, the Australian international. Was tight, but I think she was just onside there, Sam Kerr. The Chelsea record absolutely outstanding. 36 goals in 54 appearances before tonight. That included three in last season's Champions League. She was the WSL's top scorer last season. It's strange, isn't it? Because I recall when she first arrived in England, she a lot of people felt she had a slow start. Certainly didn't stay that way for long. Cut, but Slipped by Loipolz. Really noticeable, isn't it? Just how quickly there is a Chelsea player on top of any Servette player that gets the ball. There's just been no let-up from them in that respect. Even at 6-0. It says a lot about the mindset, the mentality, doesn't it, that Emma Hayes is looking to instill going forward in her players. A mindset perhaps already existed, but just got the feeling listening to her pre-match thoughts ahead of this match that it's something that she's been re-emphasising anyway, put it that way. Loy Pulse, Spence, Kerr again is on the move, Kirby to her left, and right turn! Lovely Chelsea goal. Oh, what a performance this is. The passing so crisp, so precise. And the finishing has been out of this world. Kerr with the assist this time. Kirby left it for right and... It's a fifth different scorer for Chelsea. It's a seventh goal for the English champions. Elodie Nakash, the player, is down here. The run from... Kerr was timed to perfection, wasn't it? Knowing Kerr, she probably was looking to pick out Kirby, such is their understanding and lethal combination. But left by Kirby, he wanted perhaps somebody else to get in on the air. And that's exactly what Goro Wrighton did.
Inevitably here, you ask the question, how many more for Chelsea? It's Fleming finds right. And... No changes made by Emma Hayes at half-time. You suspect they will be coming soon with Manchester City in mind. Kirby. Loy Pulse. Cuthbert. Oh, it was a lovely turn. Straight away again, Chelsea win it back. They are relentless. Kerr might have gone down there. It would have been interesting had she gone to ground. Chelsea corner towards that near post. Really bright will chase this. Sliding in with Samondine Sula. I guess it would be remiss of me not to point out with a score this big this early on in the game that we're still some way off what would be or is the record scoreline in a Women's Champions League fixture, that 21-0 Apollon registered that scoreline back in the 2012-2013 season. It was in a qualifier, can recall a 14-0 victory for Wolfsburg as well, but 21-0 is the UEFA Women's Champions League record scoreline. And we're a long way off that. Tamplin loses it, Cuthbert. You can recall Shelley Kerr praising the streetwise nature of Erin Cuthbert's play. I think we saw a little bit of that there, didn't we? Real fighter on the pitch. Wrighton with the cross. This time they do enough, Servet. Hade couldn't bring it under her spell. As the flag goes up. For once, Chelsea's progress is halted. So here come the changes that perhaps were inevitable. Lee Charles and Jonna Anderson coming on very shortly. It's interesting from a Chelsea perspective after that defeat to Barcelona in the final, where I think we saw Barcelona set a standard in that first half that you could argue we've never seen before in women's club football. They were that good. And it does seem to be with coaching and tactical tweaks that Emma Hayes wants to try and bridge that gap. No big personnel changes over the summer. Just the two significant summer signings. Lauren James from Manchester United, who's yet to feature because of injury. Anik Nalvin from PSV, who's missing tonight through injury. She has played well just of late, though, the Dutch international. Yeah, 
So 11 minutes into the second half, first changes then. And Guru Wright, having got herself on the score sheet, is one of those to make way here. Georgia Fox coming on, making her Champions League debut. All smiles for Guru Wright, who really does seem to be enjoying her football this season, more regular in the side as well. It's been perhaps helped in that respect by the change in shape. Charles on then to replace Erin Cuthbert. And the armband's being handed over here to Millie Bright by Magdalena Eriksson. In comes her fellow Swede, Jonna Andersson. When he made only her second league start of the season against Aston Villa at the weekend, Anderson. Just about managed to scramble that clear, but Chelsea will come again here, Anderson. Spence, only one league start so far this season for Drew Spence, she'll be enjoying getting some much needed minutes. Charles, Kerr and Kirby both in the box. give possession away as cheaply as that and the players that Chelsea have they will seek to punish you as Spence loses possession on the edge of the box it's a rare opportunity for the Savet counter-attack Charles. Fleming chasing as out comes Pereira. A good performance from Jesse Fleming. It was only really ever on the fringes of the Chelsea side last season. Seems to be more of a player that Emma Hayes is going to turn to in big games this season here in Bayern Munich's Alfonso Davies were named the Canadian Soccer's Players of the Month for October. It's her first start by the way in the Champions League this season. Team that Servet beat to last season's Swiss titles, Zurich, the most successful club in the history of women's club football in Switzerland. Zurich have won the league 22 times, including seven of the previous eight league championships. Now, a chance to threaten here for Servet. Had they won it back, the shot from distance doesn't trouble Lusevic. Nakash it was, with that shot from a long way out. Bright. It is Europe, by the way, who are top of this season's table in Switzerland after seven games. They've won six and lost one, three points above Servette. Currently, looks like being a really good an open race for the title actually in Switzerland. 
I think from an English perspective, heading towards a two-horse race, really, between Arsenal, who are top right now, and Chelsea, London rivals, with Manchester City having such a poor start to the season. Last season's runners-up, they've been badly affected by injuries, though. Gareth Taylor's side. Hade looking to get in behind here, trapped by Carter. Just for a moment, he thought there could be an opportunity there for Servette's most significant goal threat. To say it does remain something of a carnival atmosphere inside the stadium tonight. And even though they're losing this 7-0, we can't underestimate how big a deal it is to have a crowd in here of more than 10,000 for a, a women's game. It's a big moment, a big step forward for women's football in Switzerland this tonight. It's certainly a, a big takeaway for Servette, even though they are going to lose this game very comfortably. Bright. Charles. Quite kept in by Frank Kirby. And there is a joy in watching Frank Kirby every time she takes to the pitch when you know her history, what she's gone through personally. The loss of her mother initially as a child and then was only a couple of years ago. Had a type of heart disease, considered quitting the game. There was a point where she couldn't even walk up the stairs. And she's gone on to play in a Champions League final and who knows, could yet even win the Ballon d'Or. That will be announced on the 29th of November. Player who, whose quality, footballing ability has never been in question, but her fortitude, her resilience just as a person, as a human being is quite something really. Clearance by Millie Bright. Here is Frank Kirby. Kerr and Spence off the bar. And Fleming is there and Spence is there again. And the frame of the goal saves Servette and then the misjudgment by Millie Bright. Hade. Held up by Carter. Carter blocks the cross from Haddock. Rare defensive lapse from Chelsea. Make no mistake, by the way, Emma Hayes, despite the fact they're winning this game so handsomely, she will be really unhappy if Chelsea do concede here as well as putting an onus on Chelsea being more ruthless, more relentless. She's also said that collectively they really need to take a pride in clean sheets. Wants one tonight. Just a feeling, I think, from Emma Hayes and indeed some of the players. Magdalena Eriksson has talked about them conceding cheap goals, as she put it, this season. Certainly the feeling after match day one when they drew 3 all with Wolfsburg. Charles. Pressure from Hade. <laughs> Haven't seen too much of Natalia Padilla. Which is a shame because she is a talent. Perhaps six times by Poland. Here's the Chelsea effort from Spence. It rattled the crossbar. Just had to readjust a bit, didn't she, to get the shot in. And what a fantastic moment this is. 
wonderful to see Maram Yelda back on the pitch. You can see what it means, not just to her, but also her teammates. Replaces Jess Carter. Hasn't played Maram Yelda since she suffered a serious knee injury in the Continental Cup final of last season against Bristol. Sam Kerr replaced by Beth England. Yeah, it's not since the 14th of March that we've seen Maram Yelda playing a competitive match for Chelsea. Welcome back. Padilla. Nicely done. Couldn't resist the shot, but Hade, who's got her arm up, was in a good position. Well, she's seen so little of the ball, certainly in the final third. Natalia Padilla, perhaps just got a bit of a rush of blood to the head there. The 18-year-old. You see the English champions right now, the holders of the Continental Cup and the Community Shields. And last season's FA Cup final as well that they played in December. Domestic success really has become the norm, but it's the Champions League that they want the most. They crave that trophy. Almost become an obsession at Chelsea. Kirby. Spence puts her foot through it. It's watched wide by the goalkeeper Pereira. Wants a goal, doesn't she, tonight? Spence has gone close on a few occasions now. Talks about Chelsea having an important league game coming up at the weekend against Manchester City. Well, they recently knocked out of the FA Cup in the semi-final stage. Servette host Basel. Ahead of match day four in the Champions League. Basel a place and a point above them in Switzerland. Kirby. She get the hat-trick. Look for Beth England that time. This is a Chelsea side that is edging closer to that holy grail of the Champions League. And their last three seasons in this competition, they've made two semi-finals, followed by last season's final. Could they go one better this time, you wonder? Hade. It's done really well there. Cross wasn't bad either. Lusevic with the punch. Lagonia in the air. And for a goalkeeper who's had precious little to do, she was really alive to the threat there. Zichira Musevic. Really is able, backup, isn't she, to Anne Catherine Berger. Beth England's done well here. Kirby looks to make the run beyond her. Clearance by Pereira. So 20 minutes to go in Geneva. And a change to be made here by Servette. It's the captain who's been taken off. Lagonia, who has been capped by Canada. Played in English football as well with the Doncaster Bells just under a decade ago. So Bournemouth, formerly of 
The Scottish side Rangers comes on, was also with Leon in Montpellier earlier on in her career. Nakash the drawn as well. Rondo Gede has been brought on too. One back well by England, who looks to set Kirby on away, but covering with Spelti and a clearance by Pereira. Still such early days in this Champions League campaign, but can't help but wonder how far Chelsea can go. There is so much competition out there. There will be several sides who will fancy that they can go all the way. Of course, Lyon deposed as Champions League holders last season. Barcelona, the current champions. Paris, another side many will expect to go close. Chelsea's London rivals, Arsenal, involved as well as Charles latches onto this. The German teams as well. Wolfsburg in this group. Brilliant competition. It seems to be getting better and better every year, the UEFA Women's Champions League. It's taken some big names to halt Chelsea's path to glory in the last few years in by Wolfsburg in the semi-finals in 2018 beaten again in the final four this time by Leon in 2019 and then as I've mentioned that lost to Barca in the 2021 final Arsenal still the only British club to win this competition that in 2007 A squad that included the likes of Katie Chapman Jane Ludlow Anita Asante Rachel Yankee, Karen Carney, Faye White, Alex Scott got the winning goal. The current Arsenal squad in action against the Danish champions, Kier, tomorrow night in Denmark. Kirby. Leupolz, who of course opened the scoring after eight minutes. Significant night this for 18-year-old Georgia Fox in England under-19 international. Making her Champions League debut, just the one appearance in the league this season. She's also a part-time freestyle footballer as well. Signed her first professional contract over the summer. Two-year deal with the option of a further 12 months. Somebody that Chelsea as a club have put so much work into. She's been with them 10 years. England now looking to pull it across. Chelsea will have a corner, conceded by Spelti. <laughs> the attendance announced there, she's more than 10,000. Been a real statement there from the public in Geneva. Anderson takes the corner. Steve Charles with the header. It's a brilliant idea that they've given away as well. So many tickets to schools in the Geneva area too. Around 5,000 school children inside the stadium. That's the local team being beaten convincingly, but. Part of the attraction tonight, undoubtedly, the star-studded squad that Chelsea have. It might just have inspired many of those children who've come to this game tonight. Who knows what that could mean in the future for women's football in Switzerland. All still about continually growing the game. 
quite an upward trajectory that he's on right now, both in Switzerland and the wider continent as well. Still hoping for a hat trick, Fran Kirby. He's got two assists, we should recall as well. Tonight, Fran Kirby, a hand direct hand in four of the goals. Felicia Buchanan, the only Canadian to win the UEFA Women's Champions League. That with Leon. Jesse Fleming will be hoping she can be from the second. Kirby, England had to hold her run to stay on side, but did it well. This is Charles. Four in the box for Chelsea. Back it comes to Bright. Not one of her best. coming back from an offside position. Aram Yelda with the header forward. As much as they'll be enjoying this performance, number of goals that their side have scored tonight. Chelsea supporters, I suspect the return of Maren Mielder will maybe please them more than anything. What an impact she could have. Of course, she wasn't available because of that knee injury in the latter stages of last season's Champions League. She was so important. She had become so established in that right back position. You wonder, naturally, whether that might have made an impact. Although Barcelona were so good in the first half in Gothenburg. But a different shape being deployed now by Emma Hayes to when Maren Mielder was last in the team. Playing with a flat back four then with her at right back and you'll note that she's slotted into back three here. She's somebody who's so good, so talented, there's so many roles that she can play in a side. Central midfield, another one, full back, centre half. Proper footballer, Maren Mielder. Norwegian captain, capped more than 150 times by her country. It's just caught late there. Charles. Spence. Spence again. Always an option for the player on the ball with Chelsea as England look to return it to Kirby. Ten to go in Geneva. England. comes Millie Bright. This is Maren Mielda. We talk about Servette being at the very start of a journey in terms of European football that Chelsea have been on for a while now. As I said earlier, I think that has to be 
acknowledged and appreciated when we look at this scoreline, which is comprehensive. There is no getting around that. It's the best part of a decade, though, that Chelsea have been growing and developing in the UEFA Women's Champions League. They finished sixth in the WSL in Emma Hayes' first season in charge in 2012. They finished seventh in 2013. Easy to forget that. These things take time. is whether Chelsea can take that final step and win this competition this season. Barcelona clearly the big favourites to win it again. And they'll watch their game against the Danish champions, Kure, who are playing in this competition for the first time this season on match day two, and they were held for just over an hour away in Denmark. Ended up winning 2-0, got a penalty in the dying embers of that game to win by two goals to nil, but Kure could easily have taken the lead in the first half. Ade unable to latch on to that. Has so often been a case with English clubs in this competition of so near yet so far. I was looking it up that I found that English sides have reached the semi-finals of this competition 11 times, but only once before last season had a WSL club gone on to reach the final. Of course, that was Arsenal back in 2007. It's always dipping that, but not quite enough. Here they with the shot. Just for the record, Arsenal have been to five semi-finals. Manchester City two, Chelsea three, Birmingham City one. Manchester City knocked out in the qualifying stages of this season's competition. And Arsenal, Chelsea's London rivals in the group stage. still getting across the messages on the touchline. So many of the Chelsea players talk regularly about how her mindset, how her will to win. And constant demands for higher and higher standards with these Chelsea players. And something that drive the players on individually and collectively. Certainly from a domestic perspective, that's required really from the coach when you consider that they hold all of the major domestic honours right now. It takes a special quality, doesn't it, within a team and within individual players to when you do have all those medals already in the cabinet that you can put on the table that you just keep going again, almost forget that you've won them. Fleming, Kirby, five to go in Geneva. That's something of a surprise that Chelsea have only added one more goal since half-time. That's scored by Wrighton very early on in the second half as Charles pulls it across here. England unable to control it. Six of England's seven goals for club and country this season have been as a substitute. Hade. Now, you can't blame her for taking that on. It wasn't far away either. She's worked really hard looking to lead the line tonight with so little reward in terms of service. Cut inside well enough.
Kirby. Chelsea add an eighth in the closing stages here. Charles found by Fleming. Fleming. Leupolz. Fox. Leupolz. with the chance to cross it was England waiting in the middle it's a better at home to Basel next before they and Chelsea meet again on match day four as England is played in here can she make it eight it was unselfish and it was cleared by Tessa Tampling Looked on that for England to have a go herself. Final couple of minutes in Geneva. Spence saw the ball rather bounce off her there. Fleming's header. Back it goes from the elder to Vucevic. Another pleasing thing for Emma Hayes tonight that some fringe players have got plenty of minutes. The comeback of Marin Mielder. Youngster Fox making her Champions League debut. Hade makes way here. Somebody who's had a real influence on this campaign in the Champions League so far this season for Servette. Grivas is the player who comes on here for the closing stages. Tampling. Fleming. It's a lovely ball by Spence, and Charles has England in the middle. Spence, Lloyd Pulse. They've worked it well again here. Fox looked for England. Again, it was a good block. It's the referee who has been hurt here as we move into a minimum of three minutes added time. She seemed to be saying to the touchline there that she's OK, but there was a lot of concern from both sets of players there from the referee, Juliana Dimitrescu. She seems to have told the medical staff that she's happy for the play to resume. be perhaps with a fair degree of trepidation, trepidation won't it that the Servette squad make the journey to London for the reverse fixture on match day four Charles 
but it is all about learning on the job really for Servette this season having gone out of the Champions League at the first hurdle in what was their first season in the competition last year and the header there by Kirby and out came Pereira Goes through here to Vucevic. Well read that by Tessa Templet as we into the final minute of added time here. See improving upon the scoreline that Wolfsburg got against Servet on match day two. German side winning by five goals to nil at home. Still Servet as well as waiting for their first points of the group stage, still awaiting their first goal. What a huge positive for them tonight, the sizable crowd inside this stadium in Geneva. Oh, what a performance from Chelsea. A masterclass in finishing from last season's runners-up. They've made a statement in Geneva. As requested by their head coach, Emma Hayes, they were relentless, they were ruthless. And Servet, if we're honest, just couldn't live with them. The Swiss champion swept away, particularly in that first half. Chelsea did add another in the second half through Guro Wright and five different scorers on the night for the WSL champions. Extremely impressive. Loy Pols it was who opened the scoring. That was after eight minutes. Frank Kirby and Sam Kerr both scored two each. Kirby had a direct hand in four of the goals outstanding on the night the England international the Servet players certainly continue to work extremely hard right up against it in that second half they deserve a lot of credit for that 6-0 down at half time and they came out determined to keep the score down in the second half and that's exactly what they did how good it was as well for Chelsea to see Maren Mielder back in action tonight as well. They've waited a long time to see that. Chelsea supporters, her first performance since the Continental Cup final. Victory over Bristol City back on the 14th of March. It's another big, big plus for Emma Hayes from tonight. Couldn't really have gone much better, could it, their trip to Geneva. Fran Kirby with her first Champions League goal of the season you suspect it could be the first of many and again we saw that understanding that almost telepathic relationship that her and Kirby have and you can see the hugs there for Maren Mielder from her teammates they've all watched her fight back so valiantly from what was such a serious knee injury that will feel good to get those minutes on the pitch no attempt on target for Servette 21 total attempts for Chelsea, 11 of those on target. They scored from seven of them. That ain't a bad ratio, is it? 67% of the possession. We knew that they would boss it in terms of periods of time on the ball. I don't think that's any surprise. But it's a real statement performance from Chelsea tonight. Certainly far more convincing than their previous two displays in this season's Champions League, albeit against a higher standard of opposition in Juventus and Wolfsburg. Now meet again these two sides on match day four in London. And plenty of memories made for the youngsters who've turned out to watch this in Geneva tonight. Treated to a masterclass in finishing, really.
from Chelsea. The final goal of the night scored by Guro Wright. It could have been even more. We saw it come off the crossbar as well from Drew Spence in the second half. But Chelsea were simply sensational in Geneva. Full-time, Sabat nil, Chelsea 7.